The deflected shape of a horizontally curved beam is characterized by vertical deflections, horizontal translation, and torsional rotation of the cross-section, second-order effects and potential yielding of the beam cause nonlinear deformations until failure occurs by excessive deformations and or yielding of the member. Due to their high torsional stiffness, closed sections provide efficient resistance to these deformations. The behavior of curved beams is dependent on the span angle theta s. Beams with span angles less than 1 degrees are dominated by flexure, acting as a nominally straight beam with an initial geometric imperfection. For beams with span angles between 1 and 20 degrees, both bending and torsion have a significant influence on the behavior. When the span angle is greater than 20 degrees, the behavior is affected primarily by torsion. Because torsional deformations dominate the behavior of beams with span angles greater than 20 degrees, efficient framing systems typically utilize infill members to provide torsional restraint, where the curved member is continuously supported by torsional supports. Several methods are available to calculate the required loads in a curved beam. The required loads can also be calculated using equations. However, the equations are cumbersome for design office use, and they are available only for a limited number of idealized cases. For the simplest case shown, where the beam is subjected to equal and opposite flexural moments mx at the ends of the unbraced segment, the flexural moment is calculated as follows, and the torsional moment is calculated as follows. From these equations, we can see that the maximum flexural moment occurs halfway between the torsional supports, and the maximum torsion moment occurs at the ends. In addition to shear and axial loads, helical members are subjected to biaxial flexure and torsion. A finite element model may be the best method to determine the required member loads. A conservative model can be obtained by neglecting the treads and modeling the stringers as independent spiral members. In many cases, this will be extremely conservative because the treads can provide significant torsional restraint to the stringer. The level of torsional restraint provided by the treads is dependent on the tread type, arrangement and connection details. I will make a video on how to model horizontally curved members using 2D and 3D finite element models, so please subscribe to not miss this important video. Another method that can be used to determine the internal forces of a horizontally curved member is the M over R method. The M over R method has been used extensively in design, where the curved beam is modeled as a straight member with a length equal to the developed span length. The shear force V and the out-of-plane flexural moment MX are calculated as for a straight beam. In the following figure, the bending moment diagram for a horizontally curved, simply supported, uniformly loaded beam is shown. The solid black line shows the moment for the exact solution, and the dashed red line shows the moment calculated using the straight beam approximation. The torsional diagram for this beam is shown here. The required shear calculated using the straight beam model is equal to the theoretical value. However, the flexural and torsional moments are underpredicted. When theta s is less than or equal to pi over 6, the error for the simplified method is less than 3%. For theta s greater than pi over 6, the flexural and torsional moments can be calculated using correction factors according to these equations. For a horizontally curved, simply supported, uniformly loaded beam, 
the tortinal moment represented by the diagram shown on the right is the following, where W is the uniform load and Z is the distance along the developed beam length. It can be noticed that the maximum torsion occurs at the ends and is zero at the mid-span. For a horizontally curved, simply supported beam with a mid-span concentrated load, the torsional moment represented by the diagram on the right is calculated as follows. Similar to the previous beam, the maximum torsion occurs at the ends and is zero at the mid-span. For a horizontally curved, fixed end, uniformly loaded beam, the torsional moment is the following. The maximum torsion occurs at these locations and is zero at the ends as well as the mid-span. For a horizontally curved fixed end beam with a mid-span concentrated load, the torsional moment is the following. Again, the maximum torsion occurs at these locations and is zero at the ends as well as the mid-span. When it comes to evaluating the flexural strength, the local buckling provisions in AISC specification chapter B are applicable to horizontally curved beams without modification. As with straight beams, the flexural strength of curved beams is reduced for members that are susceptible to lateral torsional buckling. Because closed sections have a high torsional rigidity, they are typically not subject to lateral torsional buckling. The effect of curvature on the lateral torsional buckling strength is negligible when the angle between torsional restraints theta b is equal to or less than pi over 8. In this case, AISC specification chapter F is applicable to calculate the flexural strength as usually done for straight members. For doubly symmetric I-shaped members with theta b greater than pi over 8, the provisions of chapter F can be used with a revised lateral torsional buckling modification factor according to this equation. In the AISC specification equations, the developed length along the beam between torsional restraints LDB must be used instead of the straight member unbraced length LB. In the next video, we will learn how to calculate the torsional strength of horizontally curved members, in addition to combined flexure and torsion including second order effects. We will also learn to evaluate the serviceability limit state of such members. So stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching.